I'm Larry Page. I'm co-founder and uh, CEO of Google. Larry Page, the quiet genius behind Google, has been a key driver in shaping the digital age. His pioneering ideas and passion for technology led to the creation of one of the most influential companies of our time. He's one of a number of entrepreneurs and, and visionaries who believe that technology now makes it feasible. It wasn't uh, entirely clear what we did find that there were great applications. Uh, and one of them was search, uh, which uh, eventually became Google. You know, I think back to when I was like a college student, I was an engineer. You know, I was pretty sure I wanted to be a professor. Or I wanted to maybe start a company, but do something impactful. And, you know, I, you know, I had some experience. I worked for a consulting company. You know, and it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't that exciting. And, uh, you know, over the summer. Which consulting company? I'm not going to, I'm not going to, no, I can't tell You're you. You're not answering any of my questions. It was in <laughs> Washington, D.C. It was a great place to be as a college student, but I was like, you know, this isn't really from a technology point of view, you know, this isn't really that exciting, you know, it's like, we're like making software for other companies and, you know, it wasn't that exciting. So I think for me, I was always very, very aware of what computing and what engineering and science could, could do for the world. You know, I was very lucky to get a computer at age six uh, in 1978, so it was pretty early. Um, you know, I turned in a word processed assignment and the teachers were very confused. It was like sixth grade. They're like, what are these little dots that it's made out of? Um, it's a dot matrix printer. They're like, no one had seen one before. But did you ever, did you ever have a, a mentor to talk about how to run a business or did you read management books or did you do any of those? Things? Yeah, I mean, I read a lot of books like, and I read, so I was joking as we were doing Alphabet, I read like three books on naming which is more than anyone else had read. So I decided I was the expert. Um, actually, that was useful. I, I recommend reading things. Uh, we had developed this technology we called uh, PageRank. Sadly, not BrinRank. But anyway, it probably would have sold better that way. But um, uh, we had developed this technology that we found was useful for search. It by itself uh, it wasn't really a complete search engine. What we had kind of just search titles of web pages and uh, and rank them quite well uh, but we showed it to a bunch of the existing search companies back then some of you might remember them you know infoseek excite lycos uh, and uh, probably the greatest interest came from excite and actually came from Vinod. you were the the investor in excite uh, and we spent a while uh, talking to them and, and talking, talking to you, Vinod. Yeah. Um, you remember that. Uh, in the end, um, I don't think the management team there was quite as excited about it, no pun intended. Um, but I remember we were, you know, we were just, there were four grad of us at the time, four grad students at Stanford. And I remember we fired off a note to Vinod. It was just like a little email. We said, like, you know, we don't really want to sell, but okay, for $1.6 million, you got a deal. Well, this is something we think about a lot. And, you know, our mission that we defined a long time ago is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. And people always say, is that really what you guys are still doing? And I always kind of think about that myself, and I'm not quite sure. But actually, when I think about, you know, search, it's such a deep thing for all of us. You know, to really understand what you want, to understand the world's information. And we're still very much in the early stages of that, which is totally crazy. You know, we've been at it for 15 years already, but it's not at all done. When it's done, how will it be? Well, I guess, you know, I'm thinking about where we're going. You know, why, why is it not done? A lot of it is just computing is kind of a mess. You know, your computer doesn't know where you are, it doesn't know what you're doing, it doesn't know what you know. And a lot of what we tried to do recently is just make your devices work, make them understand your context. Google now, you know, knows where you are, knows what may you might need. So really having computing work and understand you and understand that information, we really haven't done that yet. Still very, very clunky. Tell me when you look at what Google is doing, 
Where does DeepMind fit? Yeah, so DeepMind is a company we just uh, acquired recently. Uh, it's in the UK. Uh, maybe first I'll tell you the way we got there, which was, you know, looking at search and really understanding, trying to understand everything, and also make computers not clunky and really understand you. Like voice was really important. And we said, well, what's the state of the art in speech recognition? It's not very good. Yeah. You know, it doesn't really understand you. So we started doing machine learning research to improve that. That helped a lot. And we started just looking at things like YouTube. Can we understand YouTube? Uh, but we actually yeah. ran machine learning on YouTube and it discovered cats. Yeah. Um, just by itself, and that that's an important concept. And that we realize there's really something here. If we can learn what cats are, you know, that must be really important. Yes. So I think Team Mind, uh, what's really amazing about Team Mind is that it can actually, they're learning things in this unsupervised way. Uh, they started with uh, video games and really just, maybe I can show the video, right. but just playing video games and learning how to do that automatically. Uh, Google with Motorola is, is now a hardware company. How important is hardware to Google? What role does it play in the overall strategy? Well, I think Android's been tremendously successful. Um, you know, we're activating you know, well over a million Android devices a day. Uh, and we're really excited about that. We've had a history of doing uh, reference devices. So, you know, we've done Nexus. You just got, I see many of you carrying around the seven inch tablet, which I really love. Uh, it's an amazing device. We designed that as a reference kind of in collaboration with Asus. So I think we're a little bit agnostic to how people get a great experience. But again, all of you as users, hopefully you're users of Google products, uh, we really want you to have a great experience. And we want to be able to innovate both on hardware and software. You know, I think back before we had smartphones, you know, we tried to get our software out to people and it was a complete disaster. Um, you know, we couldn't even get something out that would upload photos. Like carriers would say no. We had a closet of 400 different phones. We had to write specific software for each phone. It's a complete and total disaster. And you think about where we're at now, it seems much better than that. We still see tremendous opportunities for innovation uh, in hardware. You know, we have Google Glass. Sergey, my partner, is working hard on Google Glass. You know, and that's a computer that you're wearing all the time. And it's an amazing device. Uh, every time I use it, you know, I feel like I'm living in the future. You know, we're discovering things that we don't know yet about how you interact with it, what kinds of things you'll do and really how your life will be completely changed by that. So we've got to have innovation, hardware and software at the same time, it needs to be well coordinated. I think our users are well served from us uh, taking a leading role in that, but also being practical about it. And there's lots of people who are good at making the hardware. We don't have to make all that hardware. Uh, we can cooperate with those people. How did Larry and Sergey end up in your garage? Yeah, so I wish I could say I had a great eye and I picked them out as <laughs> students out of all the students at Stanford and I said, oh, come and rent my garage. I wish I could tell you that, um, but it didn't work that way. What happened was I bought a house and houses are really expensive in Silicon Valley and I was a student and so I wanted someone to help me pay the mortgage. They were looking for space and um, you know there were just the two of them and they had one employee and space was also really expensive and so the idea that they could just move into my garage quickly and easily at a relatively low cost um, for them um, was really appealing and so they just moved in. Larry and I first met when he came to visit during the, the PhD recruitment weekend which was, um, uh, he started a couple of years after I did and uh, we became uh, good friends uh, when, when he actually uh, agreed to join and came on board and we experimented with a variety of things. You know, we had some shared interests and uh, Larry had this crazy idea that he was gonna download all the links on the web and then do something with them. It wasn't uh, entirely clear what. We did find that there were great applications uh, and one of them was search. 
uh, which uh, eventually became Google. Yeah, uh, Google was really, a, it's an interesting story actually, and it's a good example of the, the benefits of really having uh, pure research. Uh, so we had no idea what we wanted to do. You know, we were, we were interested in doing research and you know, I had lots of crazy things I wanted to do. And uh, my advisor actually, uh, Terry Winograd, said, why don't you, you have this idea about the links on the web. That sounds like a good thing to work on. I think the culture of Stanford with regards to entrepreneurship and high-tech industry have been really amazing. And uh, I was really attracted to Stanford for that reason. Um, but it also uh, is just, uh, just tremendous uh, expertise in how to uh, make companies, how to get innovations out into the world that I think has a really meaningful impact. Artificial intelligence would be the ultimate version of Google. So if we had the ultimate search engine, it would understand everything on the web. It would understand um, you know, exactly what you wanted and it would give you the right thing. And that's obviously artificial intelligence. You know, it would be able to answer any question basically because almost everything is on the web, right? Prime move up behind OpenAI in the sense that it was created because of discussions that I had with uh, Larry Page um, back when he and I were, were friends and you know, I'd stay at his house and I uh, talked to him about AI safety and and Larry did not care about AI safety, or at least at the time he didn't. Um, you know, and, and at one point he called me a species for being pro-human. And I'm like, well, what team are you on, Larry? Uh, you're still on Team Robot. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so at the time, you know, uh, Google, Google had, had acquired DeepMind. They had uh, probably two thirds of all AI research, you know, probably two thirds of all the AI researchers in the world. Mm -hmm. They had basically inf infinite money and in compute. And the guy in charge, you know, Larry Page, did not care about safety and even yelled at me um, and, and, and called me a species. And, 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 Pro human. But I think one of the big issues right now with the web is uh, we've gone pretty far with the web and Ajax as a platform. So now you can, you know, you can run, uh, you know, mail in your browser. It works pretty well, uh, and so on. But we've kind of, I think, uh, the development cycle for those things is relatively hard, uh, and we've reached. I think we need to improve those platforms a lot. So one of the things we've done with Chrome is make. Uh, you know, applications run much, much faster. You know, they might run, some things might run 50 times faster uh, in Chrome as they did before. And so that ability lets you build applications you wouldn't have been able to build before that just run on the web. So, you know, while I, I feel like I pretty much live in a web browser, but there's certain things it's difficult to do in a web browser now. Uh, one of those is uh, different kinds of 3D graphics and games and things like that. Uh, we've, we've actually released some software that lets you do those kind of things in a browser. And so I think gradually we'll get to this model where you're able to run any piece of software uh, just like a web page. You go to it and it just runs. You don't have to install it. You don't get these silly dialog boxes asking you if you really want to install it and if you really, really want to install it and that you're going to break your computer and then your system administrator prevents you from doing that and so on. So there's just a lot of complexity in there that's not good for end users. And I think we'll be able to build uh, real applications that, that aren't uh, suffering from those kind of uh, issues. Well, you know, for 20 years it's been fiction, right? Um, it, it populates novels and movies, but, um, you know, it seemed fanciful. Well, what's happening now is actually not Google related. It is Larry Page related. The, the Google founder, the Alphabet CEO, is investing in this privately. And he's one of a number of entrepreneurs and, and visionaries who believe that technology now makes it feasible. You know, that advancements in things like uh, lightweight materials, electric motors, uh, computerized stabilization systems, autonomous navigation systems makes it feasible. And so Larry Page personally is backing two companies, which is kind of remarkable uh, by itself, um, both in Silicon Valley and there are a number of other companies as well around the world that are pursuing this dream of a flying car. So uh, what kind of technology might go into something like this? I imagine everyone's keeping all the secrets like under wrap right now. Oh yeah, I mean that's some good background. You know, my, my uh, co-writer Ashley Vance and I have, have basically been working on this for five years. I mean, this thing, the, all these efforts are, are very quiet, very secretive. Larry Page obviously did not talk to us for this story. We really had to ferret out the details of both companies, Z Arrow and the newer one, Kitty Hawk. 
There's a company down in Santa Cruz called Joby Aviation that's working on a prototype. Um, you know, it's what you'd expect. I mean, they're obviously very complex safety systems, AI, navigation systems, uh, but really it's the, it's, it's the, it's the you know, it's the, uh, the flight systems, these tilt uh, rotors or propellers that have to allow these small aircraft, these flying cards, if you will, to take off and land vertically. So they go up and down, kind of like, like the Navy Osprey, although uh, hopefully a little uh, cheaper than that. Uh, and then, you know, propel you at, at, you know, 100 plus miles per hour. Uh, to your destination. It's this idea that maybe it could replace the commute, it could replace the car. It sounds crazy, but I think we're a couple of years away from seeing some of these pro prototypes in the air.